G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers testing. This time we're going to be taking a look at ladders because how could I not? With how much they got teased prior to the release, I really couldn't go for anything else. Now, a couple of things I wanted to look at with ladders and I've set up a whole bunch of rigs to test a few aspects of them that I really wanted to understand better before I start using them in my builds. Things like how much can I misalign them if they're on separate grids, how do they actually function when you do stuff with them or on them. And the first thing I thought I would point out is that ladders on fixed grids behave differently to ladders on mobile grids, so subgrids or ships. On fixed grids, if I let go of this ladder, I just fall straight to the ground, my jetpack doesn't activate or anything. On mobile grids, if I do the same, my jetpack activates and my relative inertial dampeners turn on. Another thing to note is that while on ladders, just like in cockpits, you can't actually use any tools. If I press my grinder, nothing happens. If I press any of these other blocks, it seems to try and allow me to place them. Ooh, there we go. So I can actually place stuff, but as soon as I do, it kicks me off the ladder. So my experience with the ladders is that anything that interacts with you while on them will kick you off. Another important thing to consider with ladders is how you get off them. You always walk off them forwards, or you will have to get off them by pressing F. And every time you do that, if you're on a mobile grid, your relative inertial dampeners will turn on, your jetpack will turn on, and that may not be what you want. So you may want to design around the fact that you will walk off the front of the ladder. And unfortunately, when you get to the bottom, if you want to automatically drop off, you can't actually have a floor there because you don't drop off. The only situations where you drop off are where there's absolutely nothing below the ladder. So if we climb down like this, because there's nothing below, I just fall off. And that can be repeated going this way as well, because you don't have to climb oriented with gravity. You can actually climb on a ladder anyway, and if you use your jetpack, you can get on it in any direction. Well, obviously the two directions that the ladder will allow movement. When you're walking up to a ladder, it can be a bit weird how you get on it. Because I was facing downward, yet the game decided to put me with my head at this end. And if I go around to this end, it still puts me with my head facing the same way. So it seems like there might be some sort of basic orientation that it assumes with the ladders. Though I haven't figured out any way of determining which that is. Now, as I was saying before, anything that interacts with you while you're on the ladder will kick you off. But how close can a wall be before it'll do that? The answer is actually pretty straightforward. It can be anywhere far enough that your engineer can actually fit. As soon as your visual model, which is actually pretty close to the collision model, interacts with something, you will get kicked off. So there we go. I wouldn't actually be able to fit under this one, so I get kicked off the ladder. And we can demonstrate that a little bit better with this press here. And if you can't get onto a ladder, it will give you that error message saying ladder area blocked. Now. We fit. So let's turn this thing around. Crusher pistons at 1.7, 1.6, 1.5, 1.4, 3, 2. Oh. So it seems like you need about half a block of distance between the floor, as in the thing the ladder is attached to, and the thing that's going to crush you or knock you off the ladder. Obviously that estimate of half a block is a pretty rough estimate. We've got the ladder's collision box, we've got the offset of the piston, we've got all that stuff that might vary that distance a bit from what I've observed on the piston's readout. So speaking of offsets, I have a whole bunch of testing rigs for testing each of the potential offsets you may have from a ladder on one grid and a ladder on another. Because there might be situations where you want to climb from say your base into your ship, if you want a vertical airlock or that sort of thing, lots of different reasons why you might want to align ladders. You may want to build a rescue ship so you can drop it down and help people out who've run out of hydrogen. Who knows? You don't want to have to be getting it perfect like these ones. This gap here is basically zero. These two subgrids are perfectly aligned and you can climb across this ladder easily and smoothly. You can still climb across a ladder easily, but it's not particularly smoothly if there's a bigger gap than that. And we'll start with our forwards backwards gap. So that's a 10 centimeter gap and we can cross it easily both directions. If we go up to the next one, this is a 20 centimeter gap. And again, it works perfectly fine going forwards and backwards. It also works just okay. Now for a 30 centimeter gap, this one works forwards. It does not work backwards. 
to stop you going forwards, you have to actually have more than a meter's gap. So this is one meter gap and I can climb straight up at no troubles. But the next one is 1.1 and it will stop me. I will do something very strange. I'll climb up to the top and blam. If I was in survival mode, I probably might have been injured by that because that was a very clangy kind of I'm intersecting with a block sort of reaction. So it seems to me that if the ladder is in the way as you're making your climbing animation, as in it is blocking you like going down here would do, then it's going to need a much tighter offset. However, if it's not in the way, you can get away with quite a large gap. And that works in both directions. So we've got our 10 centimeter, our 20, which our 20 will work in both directions. So we can climb down and it's not in our way. So that works just fine. And it is in our way climbing up but because it's 20 centimeters, it will work just fine. 30, however, will not. We'll be able to climb down and jump onto the next ladder, but we won't be able to climb up. We get stuck. So the next offset I want to look at is horizontal. So left and right. And this one will let us go out to 50 centimeters of offset. So what I've got here is the minimum offset set to perfect alignment of the ladders. So if we move the other one out to 50 centimeters beyond that, everything should still work. There we go. Easy. Now, I think we might have a look at just adding one more centimeter. So 2.850 and then we can demonstrate that it is exactly 50 centimeters that it will tolerate because I can't move up or down. Something worth noting that you might have observed while I was climbing up this ladder is that as I got to the top, my jetpack activated. I originally thought this might be due to the fact that I used a blast door block here, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be the case that no matter how you get off a ladder, even if it's climbing off, if you're on a potentially mobile grid, your jetpack will activate, as you can see here. I should have been able to walk straight onto this block, but my jetpack activated. Which means we're going to have to remember to turn that off when we get off ladders if we're on a mobile grid. Something to keep in mind. So back to the gap chat. Our up down gap has to be incredibly tight. This gap here is 10 centimeters and I cannot cross it. So if we go to this piston and set it to five, let's see if we can cross it. I set up all this rig before I realized just how far things would actually be able to go. So I set up a whole bunch of things thinking, oh yeah, this will be able to go miles. No. So five centimeters, that we can cross. I think given that it's between five and 10 centimeters, we know that we have to get very close. I'm not going to go into more detail about figuring out what exactly that is. If you've got to get it this close, you know you've got to get it close. And that's gonna have an impact on our rotational offsets. So now that we've looked at our straight line offsets, we also need to look at our rotational ones. So rotating like that onto the next piece or like that onto the next piece or like that or like that. So those two will be the same. This is the next rig I wanted to look at because this is going to be the rotation in this direction onto the next block. We've got 0, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. And in my testing, it was actually quite difficult to get these collision boxes to line up in a way that they would consistently allow you to cross the ladder. 30 degrees was quite easy. This one works fairly well and fairly reliably in both directions. 40 was a bit more fiddly, and I think that's primarily related to the collision boxes of the ladders. You can see that they've intersected a bit here, but it looks like the back plate is primarily where the collision is. The bit that you can see in terms of the height that this is being held off the ground. That's our collision box. So being able to line things up so that they work is going to be a bit more challenging like here. I clearly messed that up. Let's just see if it works anyway. And it works climbing up, but it does not work climbing down. The angle that it seems you're able to have the ladder tilting up forward toward you or away from you is about 30 to 40 degrees where you can relatively reliably get the engineer to climb across them anything above that and it becomes inconsistent and inconsistent to the level it will work across one save and then the next time you do it and reload the same game it may not and I think that's due to the fact the grids are actually colliding to get them close enough and every time you reload that grid collision gets recalculated and things shift ever so slightly. The last rotation I wanted to look at 
And this is the last offset we can kind of expect that we might have to deal with. And that's in this direction. Now this is a 10 degree offset. And this you cannot climb. And I'm pretty sure you can see why. This side of the ladder is too far away from the other. And I think it may even be too far away in the center because we know it has to be less than 10 centimeters. That's quite clearly a bit bigger. So this is at five degrees and we can comfortably climb across because that gap in the middle and on the right is less than the maximum we can cope with. Hopefully knowing these distances and these tolerances will help us all set up these ladders in ways that are interesting but also functional in a reliable manner. Now I mentioned earlier putting ladders through an airlock and the behavior around here is something I had totally not expected. I figured you'd probably be able to get the ladders to pass through the doors like they are. With the doors open, I can drop this down over the ladders and we have no problems whatsoever. The really strange thing comes when you leave the doors closed or close them while the ladder is inside. And this is what happens. It all just works. Now, there is a situation where it doesn't quite work how you want it. If I stay well clear of this, it's actually relatively reliably able to move up and down without any explosions. No problems at all. I would have expected this to cause immense clanging with what I've just done. But it works. It works until you get close with your engineer. If I get close, and I would not do this in survival because I'm getting ejected at very high speed. If I keep doing this for a little while, it almost inevitably ends with explosions or at least damage to the ladder and obviously death to you if you're in survival. So let's grab out our grinder and let's see what's on any of these ladders. Did any of them take any damage? No. So even though there was weirdness, nothing has taken any damage. Do not rely on that in survival though because I have seen this explode and I should have a little bit of footage to put in while I'm talking right now showing this thing explode. But again, the only way I have managed to make it explode is by being near it with my engineer. As long as I stay clear, it seems you can do what you will with this, which is actually kind of cool because you need to have this move over a ladder while the doors are closed if you wanted to use this as an airlock. I'm so immune to clang it hasn't done a thing. Urgh. Come on. Clang for me. Clang for me. There we go. <laughs> I knew I could get it to work. So there. It is not completely reliable. Do not let someone get inside it while it is operating. It will go badly. Just in case what we were seeing with those doors was some indestructible subgrid shenanigans, let's check what happens with a ship. I close these doors now. It looks like it doesn't matter. It looks like that was the behavior for these doors. If I hop in this cockpit, I can move up and down quite easily as though the doors aren't even there. This actually raises another question though. Can all grids pass through those doors now? Is it only the engineer that can't? Aha. So it seems it is just ladders that can go through because I can't get those small grids to fall through. So what I was worried might be the case is that this was only going to be behavior observable on a static grid with a mobile grid. But it seems you can do this with two mobile grids. So if I turn my, oops, I disconnect from that remote control, you can see that the ladder has actually made it the whole way through. It is shaking around a lot more than we were before, but it's not a static grid this time. If I move back a bit, can I even climb this? Uh, uh, apart from getting thrown off it because it's oh exploding. <laughs> so I would say only use this airlock method if you've got a static grid with a mobile grid. It seems to work fairly consistently in that situation, but between two mobile grids, it seems to be a very, very bad idea. The next thing I wanted to test was what happens with damage to a ladder. Now ladders do have this functional line on them. So you can see that there is a line where it says functional and until it goes below that line, you can actually remain on the ladder. 
the moment this drops below it, I will get kicked off. Now, even though it's below it, I can still jump back on. And then I will stay on until it gets completely destroyed. So if you happen to be quick, you can take some damage on a ladder and quickly grab it again and manage to climb away before the damage destroys the ladder. If you grind the ladder below the functional line, like so, it's now completely unusable, even though the model looks eminently usable as a ladder. But because it doesn't have the interactivity that we need to be able to climb onto it, you can't use it yet. That's relevant if you're going to try and build an emergency ladder if you end up like me and sometimes stuck down holes where you only had some steel plate on you. You're still going to have to go back to the usual way of dealing with that problem. The next thing I wanted to look at was how easily can you hold onto a ladder that is moving. And I've got a few grids set up here to demonstrate what you can and can't get away with. So say this one. This is a single piston moving me back and forth with timers set to trigger it to switch direction every about a second. And I can hold on just fine, no problems. If I go and grab onto this one though, which is actually moving slower, I won't stay on. I get kicked off every time it changes direction. And if you have a look at the difference between these two rigs, this one is a single piston, this one has two. Now you might think I would get the same experience here because there's a single piston and two. However, this one kicks me off every time as well. It seems there's a bit of a situation where with, whenever there's a shake involved with the change in direction, that shake is enough to create a problem where you cannot hang on. So I wonder if shared inertia tensor will change that. Yes, okay, so that kind of confirms the shake hypothesis because shared inertia tensor will make this a lot more rigid. I wonder if we put it on both of these pistons, whether I'll be able to hang on. The reason I figured this would be useful is if you ever want to have an engineer move on a ladder that's on a piston to move them from one place to another. Because if you want to do that, then you will need to know how fast you can move things and how you're going to have to set things up in order to get the engineer to be able to stay on. And with two, it doesn't seem to reliably fix it. But at least with one, we can hang on fairly reliably. And that means we could do something like what we had over here, except with the ladder extending up into the airlock to be a way of getting through to the net, to the ship from our base. Rather than having to climb the ladder the whole way, which is quite slow, we don't climb very quickly. It'll take you quite a while. You could use a piston to push you up while you're grabbing onto the ladder. You climb on at one end, climb off at the other, and use the piston to do the actual traveling because you can use the piston to travel at five meters a second without kicking you off, as long as you've got shared inertia tensor on. So what about spinning? Spinning, there is a very clear delineation of what you can and can't do. This rotor is spinning at, let's just check. We've got it at 0.6 RPM and we can get on and off this thing and climb around on it, no troubles. It doesn't matter how fast your speed of movement is so if this arm is incredibly long you can get yourself moving over 100 meters a second but you can't consistently twist any faster than 0.99 revolutions per minute though i've found that 0.99 only works sometimes 0.95 it's pretty reliable so i can hop on and i don't get kicked off i can climb around every now and then this will also go weird and it'll kick you off but it is fairly reproducible and fairly reliable to be able to get away with this. The reason you'd be interested in this is if you're climbing on a ladder while someone's trying to do dogfight maneuvers in your ship. Because if we turn off this rotor, we turn our torque right down, so we know the rotor's not generating any of the force. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place a gyroscope on here. So now we've got the gyroscope providing all of the torsional force. So much like a wood on a ship. And we are currently at 0.95 and I should be able to climb on and off without any troubles. Yep, no worries, can move around. But if I jump this up to one, we'll get the exact same problems that we do with doing this with the rotor. So at one, every time you grab, you just get immediately kicked off. So you can do this and make weird things happen, but 
you will get kicked off if you rotate any faster than one. So that means if someone does a fast maneuver while you're grabbing onto a ladder in a ship, you will end up with your jetpack on and maybe splattered against a wall. So worthwhile keeping in mind. But there could be a fun application of all of this, which is we could do something like an egg and spoon race. If you take control of a vehicle while on a ladder, you can in fact drive around and I should probably take my park brakes off. And you can stay attached to the ladder as long as you move fairly gently. Move too quickly or stop too quickly or turn too quickly and you will fall off. So I can demonstrate that. There we go. As we hit the terrain there, we ended up rotating too fast and got disconnected from the ladder. And we can do the same if I accelerate quickly. And then, there we go. Fortunately, your relative inertia dampness, if this happens on a ship, should have a reasonable chance of keeping you alive. As you can see, I'm following this grid pretty well without any problems. For this test, we've jumped up to space because we're going to jump with a jump drive. And I'm gonna start that jump process now because I wanna see if I actually remain on board the ship as we jump. And here we go. There we go. Perfect. So if you're ever in an emergency situation and your co-pilots or your quote unquote friends jump out before you're ready to go, you might be able to save yourself by jumping on a ladder and keeping yourself with the ship. And now it's time for the multiplayer testing. Kapak, come with me. Over this way. What I'd like you to do is to climb this ladder here. Go to about halfway. You good? Hey, what are you doing up there? I'm going to climb down into you. What? And see what happens. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. So whenever two people are climbing on a ladder and they interrupt each other, doesn't matter which direction they're going. Can you climb the ladder again? Every time two people run into each other on ladders, they fall off. Mm. As with the single player, if we're both on a ladder that's part of a static grid, we'll fall off with our jetpacks off. However, if we're on a potentially mobile grid, so a subgrid in this case, if you hop on again, Capac, our jetpacks will turn on and we will have our relative inertial dampness active. If you climb into me, we both fall off, but our jetpacks activate immediately and we are auto dampened to that subgrid. I'm not exactly certain what I was trying to achieve with this test, but thought this demonstration was worth showing. Ah. Uh. Well, that happened. <laughs> so don't try and jump onto a ladder with someone else because <laughs> sometimes you can get ejected at high velocity from them. <laughs> that can happen. Uh, lesson learned, eh, Capac? That looked weird. Ah. <laughs> that looked so weird. I am an acrobat. <laughs> All right, acrobat, climb one of these ladders because I'm going to now do things to you and see what happens. Okay. I'm climbing. All right. So, do you let go when I start grinding you? Don't grind me. Oh, I just have to touch you and you fell off. Ow. Climb again for me? I think, I think there's a hole in my suit. So if I just fly into you, you fall off. Ow. Huh. Climb again. Ow. 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 <laughs> okay. So I have to actually kill him for him to fall off the ladder, but if I just knock into him, he falls you off don't anyway. don't have to kill anybody. Um... All right, are you respawned? Maybe. Right. Can you could you climb the ladder again, please? What are you gonna do to me this time? Shoot you. Ow! <laughs> ow! Ow! Stop that! You are taking damage. Yep. Where's no? <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, my face. All right, same same deal with the rifle as with the grinder. I'm pretty sure the drill will be the same, so I don't think I need to use it on Capac. Now, what I'd like to also test is what happens if I grind down the ladder that you're actually Whoop. gripping onto. Okay, you can just stay there. What? Oh. Oh, don't climb off the I'm end. Doing my... No, that didn't work the same. All right. All right. So if I grind this, I'm assuming you're going to fall off as it goes below the functional. Yep. Ow. So, okay, back. two more tests to do. First one, can you climb on this ladder that I'm in front of here? Uh, you mean lie on it? Yeah, lie on it. Just go to sleep there. It's perfectly safe. Uh, okay, Kabak, you ready? Ready for what? Ow! 
Did but, you get injured? Uh, no, I feel fine. Huh. Interesting. What did you do to the ladder? Um, I might have put you in a bit of a press. So, Capac, earlier when I was testing the these ladders going through these doors, the doors were able to close. I'm wondering what will happen if they close on you while the you're doors. on the ladder. So, hop on the ladder. Okay. Climb up one step. Hey. Okay, that's good enough. Ow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> It may not intersect with the ladder when it's static, but it surely intersects with Capac. <laughs> I don't like it when doors intersect with me. <laughs> Get out of here. Hey, who's the imposter? You're not wearing the same helmet as he is. Well, this guy's got a broken spine, so that can't be me. So those are a bunch of the things I wanted to know about ladders before I started building with them. When I like building contraptions like this, you can see why I wanted to know what offsets I can seriously get away with. What sort of things I could possibly do in a grid to manage to get away with putting ladders where I want them and in ways that might not have been initially intended. If you've got anything you feel needed to be tested with ladders, please let me know in the comments because I will probably revisit these at some point in the future. The other thing I'd love to know, hear about is anything you'd like to test with wind turbines, with hydrogen engines or with the survival kit as those are ones I want to test very soon too. So there's all that and plenty more to come and I will see you then. And don't go anywhere just yet because here comes a time lapse of the longest ladder ever. At least the longest I could manage to build because the game started crashing. Mm -hmm.